Have you ever wondered where mountains meet? Well, to the left of me is the Sierra Nevadas. To the right of me is the Cascades. That's Mount Lassen, the southernmost Cascade volcano. So, how do we know that this is where mountains meet? Most geologists have come to the consensus that the dividing line between the Sierra Nevadas and the Cascades is the Feather River Valley near Lake Almanor in California. This dividing line was decided upon because it is where the granite bedrock of the Sierras is last seen. In reality, the division between these two ranges is not so black and white. In fact, in many ways, the tails of these two ranges is closely linked. As with most tales of Western U.S. geology, we must talk about the Farallon Plate. The Farallon Plate was an oceanic tectonic plate. A plate is a distinct piece of Earth's upper layer, known as the crust, which is driven by deep currents in Earth's inner regions. Oceanic plates are denser than plates bearing continents, known as continental plates. So when the two collide, oceanic plates sink, which we call subduction, underneath continental plates. The Farallon Plate started its sinking journey under North America around 200 million years ago. The melting of the two plates as parts of both got dragged into the hotter inner earth caused lighter, water-rich pools of buoyant magma to rise up through the overriding earth, giving birth to ancient volcanic chains where the modern-day Sierras and part of the Cascades now reside. This is where things get quite chaotic, so bear with me. Fast forward to around 100 million years ago and a couple key things happen which start to create a distinct difference between the Sierras and the Cascades. Melted plate material didn't always make it to the surface, and in many cases, the magma would pool up in huge amounts underground, forming what we call basilisks, otherwise known as the most cursed word in the English language for people with lisp, but you can also call them plutons. These plutons slowly cooled under these huge elevated ancient volcanoes and eventually cooled into the Sierra's most iconic rock, granite. I'm in the northeastern foothills of the Sierras right now, and right in my right hand is the definitive bedrock of the Sierras, granite. Why do we use granite to determine that arbitrary border between the Sierras and the Cascades instead of a volcanic rock like in my left hand, dacite, which you can find in the nearby Lassen Peak area? Well, it's because volcanism also has occurred in the Sierras and is still sort of occurring in the Sierras. Therefore, I can show you this rock I found just a couple feet behind me. Like I said, we're in the foothills of the Sierras right now. This is a volcanic red rock. So granite is a great rock to use as the determining factor because you don't really tend to find granite in mass in the Cascades. So while this granite is cooling, something else further north is happening that is very interesting. The subducting Farallon plate is breaking off into a few separate plates, but we're most concerned with the one known as the Juan de Fuca plate, which began subducting under North America at its own rate on its own accord. This began forming ancient parts of the Cascades, but eventually the subduction halted. Now this is where things get extremely chaotic. Around 10 to 20 million years ago, the Farallon Plate subducted completely under North America, so much so that the area where it was spreading away from the neighboring Pacific Oceanic Plate subducted as well. The overriding of this spreading zone created immense forces on the North American Plate. Now the Pacific Plate was moving in the complete opposite direction of the Farallon and was actually heading northwest. This generated a huge fracture on the North American continent known as a strike-slip fault and thus California's iconic San Andreas Fault was born. Back up at the Cascades, the Juan de Fuca plate began subducting again and this began forming the modern day Cascades from the mass quantities of melted, subducted rock which started to rise rapidly to the continental surface. Back down at the Sierras, millions of years had begun revealing the granite bedrock as the surface volcanic top rock began weathering and eroding away. 
Then the added forces of the San Andreas Fault began to lift and tilt the region west, while also helping to sink the region further east of the Sierra. Go watch my Great Basin video for more info on that. And so our two modern ranges rose up to their current glory. What started as a product of the same subduction quickly diverged into geologically distinct regions. But there is some overlap. A lot of the rock types are similar and some cascade volcanism intrudes slightly east and south into the Sierra's granite boundary. Ultimately, if mountains of similar age are next to each other anywhere on Earth, their stories are unmistakably linked. So, in this little valley that I'm in right now, that side is the Sierras, that side is the Cascades. Very imperceptible to the human eye. And there's a reason for that. Geology doesn't really act in these cut and dry ways. A lot of the things that we see are very gradual and have gradients, and one thing doesn't just slam into the next, it's a slow, progressive change. Although it may never be super clear where the Sierras end and the Cascades begin, geologically they will forever be intertwined for the rest of their shared histories. Howdy y'all, just wanted to thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And just a reminder, new videos coming out every two weeks.